This is the Lights On Show. My name is Jacob Morissette. I'm an honor student at Boise State University, and this is my podcast centered around turning the lights on. I go and talk to -to day-to-day professionals to learn how they've mastered the craft. We go in-depth on the inner workings of their perspective, their process, and their strategies, all in the hopes of inspiring others. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Like the intro said, uh, this is the Lights On Show, and... Yeah, my name is Jacob Morris. If I sound a little weird, it's because uh, allergies kicking my butt right now. Because um, the way Washington State works, I mean, most of my listeners are from Washington State, but for those of you who are not, um, you know, Washingtonians, Washington really only has two seasons, and that's pouring down rain every single day, dark and gloomy, and no. No light at all. And then it has sunshine. And so there's like a week or two where you would really consider it being fall or spring. And then all the rest of like the weird spring fall weather is kind of sprinkled around throughout when it's supposed to be summertime. So right now it's June. And for some reason... My allergies are flaring up versus at towards the end of May. It was still pretty nice weather out. It wasn't too bad. Normally, everyone else would be having spring. And um, a lot of other people would be experiencing allergies in other states. But now Washington, I was perfectly fine all throughout May. And now I'm getting pooped on. So here's what you guys have to live with uh, for the next, I don't know how long the episode's going to be. But... Um, this episode is going to be all with myself today. I did not uh, coordinate a, um interview, and that's for two purposes. One, um, it was graduation week, uh, and it was really busy. I had a lot of stuff to do. I have a talk to prepare for uh, for church, uh, which is basically like a speech, so I had to take a little bit to research that. I had to graduate. I had a whole bunch of dookie I had to get done uh, this week, and since I did graduate, I wanted to just kind of do a one-on-one episode, um, specific specifically with me, since I've talked to so many other people, um, like Riley and Maverick and Aiden, and kind of got their perspectives on growing up and becoming older and how this process works for them, and then kind of you know talking with them about it. Uh, but this one I want to kind of just hit just for me. So it ended up working out pretty well. So um, being that I did graduate, um, I'm 12th. I got my diploma. I got everything. Walked on the stupid stage. It was great. Um, I realized a couple things. And one of the first ones was that um, for 12 years of my life, I've been going to school. And... For a result of that, the only thing I've gotten for free out of that public school was a little piece of crap diploma, which is not even that fancy. It's just like this weird, cheap, kind of plasticky, plush, like, sleeve cover thing, and this little baby boy piece of paper that I looked at and felt it. I looked at it, I was thinking about it. I was like, was this worth it for the little baby boy piece of garbage for 12 years? No, no, it was not worth it at all. Um, but what made it worth it to me was, well, obviously now I can go to college and just like my employability automatically skyrockets just because I have a high school diploma. Um and all the lessons I learned. Um, so if you remember back to one of my first episodes, uh, my biggest mistakes as a student, kind of all that stuff um, are the things that really made high school worth it. Um, being around a lot of your peers helps you find kind of who you are if you play it the right way. Um, you have the ability to mold who you're going to be, period. Like obviously in college we can pick whatever major we want. And you can do whatever minor you want. You can study however you want, whenever you want, whatever time you want, where you want. It doesn't matter. But I think high school kind of helps set a 
um, like a, a, a rope through whatever you want to do because since college is so open to everything, I feel like a lot of people might get intimidated or confused. I know right now I'm going through a little bit of an intimidation trying to figure out sp- specifically what uh, major I want to do and like all my classes and like really kind of figuring out all that little stuff that you have the freedom to do. Um, and I know that for the, some of the stuff I'm not confused about, like, okay, I know I want to do math. Like, I know I don't want to participate very much in basic English classes and like creative writing. Like, I want to focus in STEM. I want to focus in like abstract arts. And what I mean by abstracts is like not like typical painting or, you know, like English, but like creating films and graphic design, like kind of more computer based STEM kind of stuff, but still art, uh, still creating stuff, which is kind of like the podcast. And even then computer science is still really creative. You have to be able to speak a computer language and create something, which is still pretty creative in my opinion. Um, but yeah, high school definitely helps align all that kind of helps find who you are and it pushes you to, um, understand that not everything in the world is like a five-year-old's world. Uh, even though I would still say high school is really not all that stressful because like I said, all your classes are kind of already lined up for the most part. Like you're not very out there and open and free to make your own decisions. Like at least when I went to high school, um, the past four years, uh, the Washington State Core 24 um, requirements basically, and I won't get too much into the details, but basically every single one of my classes was pretty much pre-picked out for me. Uh, I had very few limitations. Like I could realistically just pick between art credits. I could realistically just pick between PE credits, and there wasn't really even that many options, period. Uh, so all four years, I pretty much did exactly what everyone else did just maybe at different times like some people would take their uh, photography class uh freshman freshman year like i did or they take it their sophomore junior or senior year uh just a little bit of variation but basically everyone got the exact same um education which kind of sucked but at the same time like i said it kind of allows you to slowly um get into that real world stress level and especially since the way I've been raised, um, which is every single day after school, basically you go out and you work on the house um, because we have a lot of property. Not trying to flex, but like basically the the environment I've been put in right now is just all the time you do stuff you don't want to do. All the time. You you are doing the uncomfortable at all times. You know, like physically uncomfortable, like you're sore, you're tired, you're... It's hot outside or it's cold outside. It's raining. You just go out and do it. You don't even complain. You don't even care. And high school also kind of helped do that because I didn't want to have to sit there and read my AP chemistry textbook all the time. I just kind of got, I guess, beaten with a wooden stick until I was submissive to that crap. Um, Which I do, I would say that's a pretty important thing to have because that's what life is all about. Life is all about taking the garbage and just dealing with it and you can't really deal with it if you're complaining all the time. Um, which is, yeah, I thought that was a really key thing to be able to understand. Especially going to college, I'm going to have to do even more stuff I want to do. Like, my English classes are now going to get a lot harder. And I hate English classes. Like, I hate them with a passion. Like, they're terrible. I think they're stupid. There's no reason for me to have to do it, especially if I want to learn math. All that stuff. Um, but anyways, I had my party, and this is kind of the main point of the video. I had my party, my graduation party, on Thursday of this week, and my mom set up a give me advice jar for all the old peoples to give me some advice for the coming years, and kind of what I just talked about with the high school stuff, but from an adult's perspective now, um, and I would just like to read some some of those and see how they work out in this episode maybe talk about them uh, if I like them so yeah here we go um all right so one of the first ones I grabbed on my little bin was quote don't get a divorce all right cool thanks um no but for real though I think that's such a good piece of advice especially 
I, I think it's a little deeper than just don't get a divorce. Um, especially in today's day and age, I feel like the family has fallen apart. And call me a conservative old hag all you want. But, you know, families are important. They're an important structure to um, to our lives. They are a support group, um, a personal support group. They, the home. And so, like, and by a home, I don't mean a McMansion. I don't mean it has to be an actual bot house. But just wherever you consider home with your family, even if that family may be a group of friends in college, right? That family and that home is supposed to be a, a, a safe haven. Now, whether that be a spiritual safe haven, if you are religious, or if it's just a a safe haven from all the other garbage you hate to deal with on a daily basis. The home and the family is an important part of our lives and to happiness and to becoming better and doing it. like it's 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 so important and I think don't get a divorce kind of pulls in line with keeping a family and don't letting it fall apart or at least picking a family to be invested in like like a marriage the right way and don't pick someone for all the wrong reasons which then you get a divorce like my parents or like the many other parents I know that are out there uh destroying families which it really sucks. I'm not trying to you know, be all boo-hoo on me because, frankly, my divorce story, you know, I, I thought it really sucked. Uh, but there's obviously way worse um, broken family stories that there's out there like crazy. There's there's lots of other ones, and and it sucks. You know, if I can only speak out a little bit for some of the problems that others have to deal with, that it really sucks, and why would you want to put someone else through it? I know I don't want to. I know that it's, it makes me a lot more conscious on who I will be invested in in the future. So, awesome piece of advice. These don't, some of them have names on them, some of them I don't. I'll just keep them no name, but that's one of them. Um, the next one is attend institute regularly. So, institute is basically a college class uh, for church. It's like seminary, but it's more of a college level. And, um, you know, if you're not a member of the church, probably won't understand why someone would want to wake up really early in the morning and go to church. But uh, a lot of members, especially myself, feel it's really nice, like a cup of coffee, except for we don't drink coffee. So that's our alternative. It helps us wake up. It helps us get us through the day, understand who we are and where, who we are in God's kingdom and all that stuff. So. I really like that, and I do plan on attending Institute every single day that I can. Um, there's also a summer Institute program for um, the stake here where I live, so I will also be attending that. So awesome piece of advice. I really appreciate that. Um, and then uh, this next card says, be good, be grateful, enjoy life. You know, a lot. some of these, a lot of them, just talk about being kind. Like one of them says, be kind to everyone, eat pizza and play as hard as you work. Another one says, be a kind person if you want. If, yeah, so it says, be a kind person you want to find. And, oh, well, I think, I think this is really bad structurally. It's be the kind person you want to find and mercy. So, okay, okay, I figured it out. So, it says, be a kind person. That's what I think the first sentence is. And it says, and then it says, you want to find mercy. So, again, being kind and having mercy. Um, yeah. And I think those are super duper important. And the reason why I think they're so important, though, is because... Um, it's just treat others how you want to be treated. And I understand that a lot of people are like, oh, well, you're fake. You're fake this. You're fake that. But especially when it comes to strangers and it comes to people that you don't care about, um, being fake is kind of the best way to go. Like, it just allows you to continue being you. It helps you not being in other people's faces that you don't need to be in. Like, being kind and grateful are just attitudes 
And if you've listened to my interview with Aiden Moak, which was the last episode, which I highly recommend you do, um, we talked about how attitudes change everything. And th- these attitudes that people are telling me to have, like being grateful, um, you know, if you're constantly looking at the negative things, you're never going to find happiness. Being grateful for all the little things you have is important because it helps you understand what really matters in life. Like, I'm thankful for having a roof over my head. I'm thankful for the food I eat every single day. I'm thankful for the bed I have to sleep in. Like, you know, people take these things for granted sometimes. And when you can take a step back and look at things that you really do appreciate, and it just kind of makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you're not a selfish piece of crap. Um, and yeah, so I just encourage people to try to become grateful for things, um, which is, it's, uh, that's a perfect piece of advice. Um, and then, like I said, be kind, uh, being kind can go a long way. Um, even if it means being fake, who cares if you have someone on the street who's frantically trying to come up to you, like, do I look pretty? Do I look pretty? Like, like if they're like freaking out cause they have an interview to go to, maybe their car busted down and like, they just need some type of reassurance to understand they don't suck. Yeah. Be kind to them. Tell them they are great. You know, those short little, and I understand that's like a once in a lifetime situation, but it's like that idea of just, you don't know what could happen with your kindness. You know, if, and I, and I hate to use this analogy, but like, you know, there, there's people that do bad in this world and we, we all know this. I don't need to give examples. Everyone knows of the type of bad and harmful things that happen in this world because of some people. And imagine if their whole life they were surrounded by kindness. Now, obviously, we don't know what their childhood was. Like, we don't know um, actor shoot active shooters. We don't know their life story. We don't know, um, you know, war criminals. We don't know any of their, of their situations. But just I'm assuming that most of their lives were not full of kindness. You know, you can just tell, like, usually you see a person, like, really happy. They talk about, oh, yeah, highly you know, like, my family's so nice, blah, blah, blah. But, like, yeah, like, if they were surrounded by kindness, maybe some good would have come out instead of bad. Um, and it's so much bigger than, than just the person being kind. It's so much bigger than just the words of kindness. It's the la- long-lasting impact that it has on the psychological parts of a human. It's just insane. And I know that a lot of people that listen to this podcast are young, or maybe they, um, I don't know, maybe they're just young, and so we, we've never even understood what it means to be long-lasting, uh, but kindness and being grateful are one of those attitudes that are long-lasting and just make such big differences in the future. So I really appreciate those because um, I always try to be grateful, I always try to be kind, but... Um, it's really important to have constant reminders at all times, keeping you in check. That's why when I go to college, I want to try to get, uh, you know, a really cool framed picture of Jesus. Sounds kind of dumb, but well, at least the people that don't understand. But I want to get a something that reminds me of the gospel and the person who I am going to strive to live like. You know, we all want to try to live more Christ-like with kindness and love and compassion and respect and. <laughs> And, you know, faith and all that type of stuff. And that's why I want to get a picture, um, a nice one. So that way, when I'm in my dorm, I can look and I can always be reminded of the attitudes I should be having that will help lead me to joy and happiness and fulfillment. Um, so, and, and then I would recommend that. If you have something that helps to keep you in check attitude-wise, put it in a spot where you can't ever forget it. You know, if, if that be a note that you write in your app every single day or if that be a picture you put on your wall or if that be a ritual you do every single day do it and it will keep you in check and it help keep you happy all right so a couple of these are about um some here i'll just read i'll just read them so this one says um if i can fully understand what it says says never compare yourself to anyone exclamation point live fearless and no matter how hard life gets never forsake the gospel now we'll note it's kind of funny 
But when she said for sake, I thought she said F sake. And I was really confused. Um, but now I understand it says for sake. So good call on that one. Um, yep. Again, the attitude. Don't compare yourself to others. It'll just lead to more misery. Uh, because you are who you are. And um, y- no one can change that. And I understand there's a really big problem going on with the whole LGBTQ AI plus community. Um, but still, at that, at, at that same point, you know, never compare yourself to anyone. Live who you are truly meant to be as. Um, yeah. Like, honestly. I know a lot of people in my position, I guess in a religious background, would be like, rah, rah, rah. But, like, no. Like, I'm not gonna compare. I'm not gonna compare myself to you. Don't you don't compare yourself to others. Like do things that you have to do, um, and it's between you and the Lord. That's why I truly believe so. But still, nonetheless, it's so important not to compare ourselves to others, because um, that just leaves us in this trap of feeling like we haven't done what we need to do, even though for ourselves that's what we need to do. Um, like, I don't know. I was give, give a really good example, right? Brother the Ryan Moek or Brother Moek. So that's why I, that's why I call him, you know, like the church structural so, um, thing, you know, brother and sister. Um, but uh, Ryan Moek, he's a absolutely fantastic artist, and I know he kind of gets all like, "Oh shucks, you don't have to tell me I'm so good." I'm like, but he's really good, uh, and you know, the passion he has for his work is it's really cool to be able to hear and experience and understand, but. Um, I don't sit there and compare myself. Oh, I wish I could draw like that. I can't do anything until I draw like him. Or, you know, I don't sit there and bash myself for what he can do. And I feel like a lot of people do that. Um, not just in art concepts, but all the time. That's what social media is all about, right? Social media is all about showing the best our lives have to offer. But a lot of the time, some people take that and think that's what their life is like all the time. And then just get sad because their own life sucks. And usually it's because of money or looks or the relationships they have. And it's so unfair to ourselves to sit there and just compare and compare and compare. It just leaves us in a constant state of sadness and misery and garbage. So don't compare yourself. It's, it's, uh, it, it's a lot easier said than done, but once you can kind of figure it out, it's amazing. Um, it says live fearless. And no matter how hard life gets, never forsake the gospel. Um, which is awesome. Because I was talking to my uncle early this week because he came to my graduation. And he was talking, we were just talking about, like, when you forsake the gospel, everything gets harder. And, you know, argue with me all you want. But for me, that is something that I understand on a personal level. Like, it's harder when you don't listen to the gospel, when you don't follow its teachings, even like basic things like like the New Testament and all that type of stuff, like, yeah. And live fearless, like don't let people scare you, go do what you gotta do, be you. Again, never compare yourself to others fearlessly. Awesome. Um. So this next one says, take your duct tape, to the ocean and attach it to your crocs securely so this is a funny story and this is the reason why i kind of want to talk about this one on the podcast because it's gonna help liven up this episode a little bit so we will provide some context obviously my parents got divorced so my mom and my dad both remarried um separately and so my mom when my mom remarried um to my stepdad um my stepdad had some really close friends that um, we're still close family friends with today, and they are outdoorsmen. They like to go clamming, they like to do fishing, hunting, camping, they like to do all that type of stuff. I do not. I hate it. Anyways, um, I, th- I was really young. I think I was like six or five, and we went to Ocean Shores, or someone in the ocean, since I live in Washington. Um, the oceans were really crappy. It was cold and wet and nasty. But we were going clamming. And I was standing there looking at something. And this wave just comes out of nowhere and totally takes me out. Takes my little five-year-old self out. And I'm rolling through the ocean. Cause, and it, it, what's funny is that it pulled me 
in to the shore, not out of the shore. So I actually got hit with a wave coming in and just kept rolling. Like probably like a good like 20, 30, 40 feet just rolling on the ground, just getting destroyed by this ocean. And I was wearing Crocs. And my Crocs were tumbling off at the same time I was tumbling. And then the family friend, the father, like I was talking about, just like straight picks me up by my overalls and sets me on the ground like it was nothing, like it was easy. And I was just sitting there getting disturbed of it, getting destroyed by this wave. And I was just crying. I'm like, I want to go home. So it was really funny and I hated it. And it was just a terrible experience. I've never gone clamming since. Um, so that's what the context is. It's just tape the Crocs to my feet so that way they don't fly off. And I get all upset that I don't have my Crocs anymore. It's awesome. Um, another one just says be you. Again, don't compare yourselves to others. Be kind. Find a way to show what you have to offer in a really good way. Like Try to bring some good to this world. I love thinking like that. I love thinking how can I produce something in this world like what like how can I bring that more value to this world sometimes it's a little things like being kind or grateful sometimes it's bigger like being the president of the United States or being a local office leader that's changing stuff um in government it, it, there's a lot of stuff that can bring value to the world but try to bring value to the world your own way Sorry about that. You know, I'm searching a little bit. And another one says, don't forget your scriptures on your, on your mission. Yeah, should not do that. If you forget your scriptures on your mission, you are smoked. And yeah, you just look at a little dummy. So definitely gotta bring those. Um, And I think oh, one of them says, get lots of sleep. Which is true. Again, I don't think anyone does not understand that sleep's really important. I think we're always told sleep's important, but we never really do it. Um, but yeah, get lots of sleep. I wish I got more sleep during this during the school year. Um, it was just bad. I spent a lot of time not sleeping, a lot of time doing homework and all other mess like that, and that's gonna be just like the same thing in college, but. I'll just have to figure out a way to make it a priority. I think it's one of those things where if we are to sacrifice um, things for something else, we should be sacrificing our other things for sleep because it just helps a ton with a lot of stuff. But, yeah, I don't know. This has been kind of a fun episode. Um, Normally, I would get really bored in an episode by myself, but... I had a lot of stuff to keep me entertained and distracted. And I kind of had an agenda going through the whole thing. Um, So if you hate this episode, I'm sorry. This is going to happen anyways. Uh, If you love this episode, I'm glad to hear it. Um, It was really awesome to be able to make a difference. And I'm to be able to hear all the people that um, just say how much they appreciate the podcast. It's it's really awesome to be able to hear that. And it kind of inspires me to, to continue making it. Because I know for myself, I learned a whole bunch doing it and it's really fun and um yeah if you do enjoy it and bring some thought to your life follow me on twitter lights underscore show that's where i keep everything updated sometimes sometimes i'm really bad at keeping it but um i don't do any spam or ads or blow up anything so it's really not that hard to follow me on twitter it just helps to know like hey if i'm not gonna release an episode this week you know why or um maybe what episode i'm gonna release this week or um I don't know if I'm going to do any polls. I don't know. I'm not very big. I only have like 25 followers. Um, so, yeah. Follow me on Twitter or leave a rating on iTunes because or the Apple Podcast app um, because that helps me also know that I'm doing something good. Now, obviously, I can look at all my numbers on my um, hosting website, and they can give me all the analytics for my show. But those could just be bots, so it helps me know that I'm really helping and changing other people's lives um, on a more personal level when you guys leave ratings. And it's kind of like a, a flex, like, yeah, I do, I got some ratings, bro. Um, but yeah, it just feels really awesome to be able to read 
um, specifically what maybe you guys like about the episode. It helps me know what things I should be doing, what things I shouldn't be doing, all that type of stuff. So it's super awesome feedback to be able to give me. And I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace out.